the same pigment that you have in oils, acrylics, and watercolors. It's dry. It's put together with binders and extenders. Depending how much binder or extenders will depend how hard it is. I tend to work from hard to soft, and then the luscious soft powdery. But then I go back, I break every rule. And it should be broken, as far as I'm concerned. It should be broken. So I work from that. Now, this applies the techniques I'll tell you on how to is sealed will be the same as if you're doing oils or watercolors or acrylics. It really is the same. Because what it comes down to is seeing. It's not what you think you have. Forget about the names. It's not a nose or with a mouth and ear. It shapes. And you apply it to anything you do, whether it's portraits, landscapes, still life. It's all shapes and darks and lights. Now there are three parts, in my opinion, to a good picture. The first part is the composition. You have to decide, what are you going to paint? And what's important in that picture to you? So you lay it out. I'll, I'll show you. Oh, I didn't say I missed the point. I'm going to be working on cans on paper before somebody asks me anyway. Canson, I feel, is the workhorse of pastel papers. Much maligned, but you can brush off 20 times. I did a portrait of eight people in the family, and they wanted this baby, and the baby, they liked another picture. I wiped it off seven times. <laughs> seven times. And I still was able to do it. And it came out. So I'll pass it on. This is Canson. I work on the smooth side. So I'll pass that around now. There are very many others pastel papers. They're sanded papers. And um, pastel tends to be very versatile. I'm an impatient person. And what's wonderful about pastel is that you can jump right in and do things. You don't have to wait for it to dry or to layer. I mean, you layer. Trust me, you layer. Uh, you, you do layer and glaze over. But it's a, I'm a patient with that, and you really can get in the meat of the same thing. You also can dissolve it with alcohol, water, and turban oil. Mm -hmm. So depending on the paper you're using or the ground. I mean, some papers, like this paper, you can, you can put a wash on. Mm -hmm. There's a whole bunch. I'm just going to pass these around so you see the difference in them. And um, there's so many things you can do. You, you have a lot of fun. You really, you really do. Just the way you can with, with oils and acrylics. I mean, even Picasso, there was a big exhibit of his at the Guggenheim, and he had these big oils, and he threw over them with pastel and charcoal. And I went, yes, okay. <laughs> to get a different effect. So use your medium. It's only a tool. Don't let that tool control you. You control it. Just remember that, and, and don't be afraid of what you're using. So here's some different sanded papers. You can feel it. Sanded. Here's Canson. I'll put some on side. Canson, some more sanded. And here, and there, and everywhere. And um, all right, so I'll get back to the three parts. So you want the composition. How are you going to lay it out? What's important is that your eye is not stuck in one spot. That there's not one thing where you look at it, with your, your eye's just there. You want to get your eye moving around the picture. That's what makes it interesting. You do have to know where you want sort of the center part of it, but you want objects, diagonals, whatever, to move your eye around. Um, Cezanne was notorious for going out, plein air painting, and standing there for a day and not putting a thing on his pants. I think it was Pizarro who went with him, and he'd be, and, he, and Cezanne would be standing there. He was processing what he wanted to do. It's okay. You're first working from here. 
Okay. So you want to get your composition done. The second part, the second part is your drawing. Now what is drawing people? No, no, I got it. Well, what drawing is, is seeing. Not what you think. It's not the lips and the nose. If you look at it and say, oh, I'm doing your nose now. No. Look at the shapes. When you forget the names, then you start to really <coughs> see relationships of shapes, one shape to the other, both on the face and outside the face. Relationship of this shape to this shape. And that's where you really start to put it together. That's all go into that in my workshop, certainly. But, uh, and I'll show you here with it. So you're working with chick. Now, you are going to make mistakes. Hello, you're gonna make mistakes. You absolutely are. And I can tell you, not to be afraid of mistakes, because you do learn from your mistakes. I can tell you, it happens so often to me. I will sit there and start doing a model, or whatever. They're like, and I'll say, mm, this is really good. Oh, this is going to be great. Oh, so people see this one. I really nailed this, right? Okay, and then I step back and, oh, I have to get my mirror. I use a mirror. And I step back and I use the mirror to look at it. It reverses. And I look and I go, oh, wait, I'm in the church. I can't say it. <laughs> I, I look at it and the nose is this way. The chin is this way, and I go, how can I do this? It's all crooked. I correct it, because I look and I see. I see from the mirror what I'm doing, and then I see the model. So I correct that. And often, I, I like three-quarter views. You know, like this, so you don't see straight on. I think it's a little more interesting off to the side. And I found that both eyes, one thing I mistakenly you make mistakes is that getting them aligned. Sometimes I get them wrong. And I get mad at myself, I used to. And I say, you're supposed to be a professional. How could you be making that mistake? You've done this so often, right? Well, how many saw the Michelangelo exhibit at the, uh, right? The New York Times had a beautiful drawing of his advertised, you know, on their article. Three-quarter view. Beautiful. And I looked at it, and the eyes were off. They <laughs> were off. My husband can attest. I was in my studio. I started shrieking. Yes! If Michelangelo can make a mistake, I can make a mistake. You can make a mistake. We all make mistakes. You look at it, you correct it, and you move on. Okay. That's the whole point. We're, we're, we're not robots. So drawing is important, but you have to remember it's, it's seeing. And you can apply that to still lives and landscapes. It's all what you're seeing, your eyes are seeing. The last part is value. And I'm sure you've heard the old saying, value does the work and color gets the glory. And it's true. Mm -hmm. On the side of the face, well, I'll put Sherry up, like you have a shadow along the side of your face. You can use 20 different colors in that shadow. I mean, if they're the same value, in other words, the same darkness or light, it will work and it'll be more exciting. I like to use different colors. You'll see I'll start in with all the colors and then I bring it back. It's going to be chaos. I mean, you're going to go, what the heck? Yeah. But, so your values have to be right and your shapes. So the value is there, and then you work with your colors, and you play them off of one another. That's why I use a colored background. Now, I'm, I'm being very conservative today. I'm using a, you know, sort of a tan background. I was, oh, I realize this is not working right. Here we go. Um, I often use a, uh, a darker color, but then you wouldn't see the, the lines that I put on. And I use different colors. I used the, the color of Jerry's shirt. I love that color. I've used burgundies. I've used 
blues, greens, and, and, you know, purples. I do enjoy doing the different colors. You can see the one over there. That, that picture of the, he's a, a, a man, a street man in St. Augustine. I saw him and I took 20 million pictures I, from a distance. I'm zooming in. I loved his face. But that's a purplish gray picture. So I really enjoyed doing that. What determines the type of paper you use for each? Well, I use Canson a lot for the portraits. It, it does depend what I want to do, and it does. So for, I'm using this right now. If I have a commission, I've used the sanded paper. I did some still lights on some of the sanded paper, which I like too. Um, and I'm now I'm doing things where I make my own background with some gesso and, and pumice, and it's very rough, so it's a combination. Oh, I'm just I'm having fun. In my old age, I'm having fun. That's the whole point. Uh, a friend, my husband's friend, who unfortunately has passed away, told me years ago when I was struggling over a commission, he said, Judy, have fun. I went, he's right. Life is too short. Enjoy it. Enjoy it. So you have the three things. Compos uh, you have composition, your drawing, and value. The most important thing is uh, to be yourself. To, to be who you are. Because I love this quote. I use this quote all the time. Be yourself because everyone else is taken. Oscar Wilde, and it is true. You will see Judy Leeds be herself. You'll learn from me, but don't try to be me, because your uniqueness is what's going to make your art unique. So I'm just starting to just put a few lines in. As I said, I don't want to do too much because because you'll fall asleep on me. And Jerry has great skin color. Like when they showed me, when Glenda showed me, um, sent her picture, I said, oh yeah. She says, what do you think? Because I asked to see the picture of where we were sitting, just so I can maybe, you know, get, get an idea of the color scheme and the paper. And she has great skin color. So you might see me fooling with that. Now I'm, I'm saying here, just as an example, I'll look where her part comes right down with her eye. It's all relationships, one thing to the other. Are you able to see? Did you want to come? Can you move over? I, so it's all the relationships and, and where her eye comes over the end of her mouth. So I'll put a few spots in, and I can assure you, honestly, that after a while, it will all go off, and I'll have to bring it back in. Okay. Let me see. Okay. I think I have this going. And I want to get some more. I want to get with my charcoal a little of the darker end of it. Purple and brown. You know, see these in the same value. But when they go down on the paper, they might be a little off, so I'll, I'll adjust it. But I'm going to work first in the shadow, and I'm going to use my purple first. And as I work, as I work and go over it, I correct the drawing. Just giving this a nice little shape, and I see that this you see more of her head, forehead here, and so I'll move it up a little bit. And in here, again, I'm not I'm, well. I might indicate the shadow a little bit, but. blonde hair. It's, it's like a greenish to blonde. It's a little greenish and then it goes. Now, what am I going to do? 
I want to play some of this color. And it, here we go. And the color, it goes a little bit off. And I will might use my finger here because it's still lighter. I go supple over. And what's behind here? I have the best color. Where is it? Come on, generally at the end. Let me just get a little bit of the color in her cheeks because I have to get the and as you go towards the eye, it gets a little cooler. I admit it. I do edge towards it. However it it is. It is cooler down here. Alright. The glasses. First I do what's underneath. And she really has, it, it goes cooler. You see, you, can you see how it gets a little cooler up there? All right, and then she has, oh, it's nice little red by her eyes there. And it gets, there's an edge that's red. See, it's a little bit, see, she has like a little light here. It's, you, you just look, the shapes, forget about this. And, you know, down here, and I'll get to the eyes. Trust me, I will. I have, oh, 20 minutes.